Hello and welcome to the fifth video in the Bubble Beginners program series. In this video, we will cover backend workflows. So we just went over front-end workflows, which are actions that happen right away as soon as a certain condition is met. For backend workflows, these are workflows that you can schedule to run at a later date and point in time. So this is super helpful for things such as modifying your app data, deleting app data, sending users reminders and other sort of action items like that, and just generally other things that you can do in terms of scheduling items to happen within your application. So backend workflows run on the server, which means as soon as it, that time hits, that schedule time, that backend workflow will run and it runs on the server. So it doesn't take any of the memory or space or usage or RAM on the user's device. So it's very nice, right? It keeps your application running smoothly for the user. It just runs purely on the server. So to run backend workflows, if you take a look here at page index, we don't see backend workflows here, and that's because we actually have to enable them within our application. So if we go to settings and then API, you can see here, enable workflow API and backend workflows. So we'll go ahead and check that. And now if we go to this drop down here, we can see backend workflows. So let's go ahead and click that. And let's go ahead and add our first backend workflow. So we'll click here. We'll say new API workflow. And the name we'll provide it is send email. Now let's go through some of these options we have here. Expose as a public API workflow. This is basically if you want an alternate application to hit this endpoint. In our case for send email, we don't want this, so we'll go ahead and uncheck it. This workflow can be run without authentication. Same thing, right? Because this is an internal workflow, we can check this. We don't need like a third party application or tool to authenticate with our application. Lastly, ignore privacy rules. Same thing, we'll get into privacy rules in a later video. But because our application is, is initiating and running this workflow, we really don't care about privacy rules. Parameter definition, this is important. Again, if you have another third-party application or tool calling this workflow, because it's just internal, we'll leave it as manual definition. And then all the bottoms here, uh, bottom conditions here are, are again for an external API endpoint hitting us. Again, because this send email backend workflow is initiated by us, by our bubble application, we'll just leave everything as is. The only thing that we'll do is add parameters. So here in parameters, because we're scheduling this workflow to run at a later point in time, it needs various data to hold onto to know what to run this workflow against? What data does it run against? So for example, we'll add one key called user here, and the type will be a user. Okay, so now once this workflow is scheduled, it'll be given a time, and as soon as that time is hit, it'll run this backend workflow on the server. And what should it do? In this case, we have send email, so we'll say email send email, and who is it going to send an email to? We see this user up top. So this user is actually the user that we passed here in this key that it's saving. So we'll say send email to user's email. And of course we have sender name, subject, body. Hello, this is an automated reminder. Right, so why do we actually need this instead of a front-end workflow? As you can see, this design tab is actually blocked out, and that's because back-end workflows run purely on the server. There's no front-end UI component for the user. 
So let's go back to our index page here. Let's go back to our sign up workflow. And instead of sending the user an email right away, let's delete this. Let's add a new step within this workflow. And in uh, custom events here, you can see schedule API workflow. So we'll go ahead and select that. And the API workflow we're going to run is send email, the one that we just created. And the schedule date is going to be current date time. Okay. But we are going to add a couple hours, right? We'll say plus hours three. We're going to ignore privacy rules when running the workflow. And the user that we need to pass to this API endpoint is the current user. So we just created our first backend workflow. So let's really just summarize what we've built out. So when the user signs up, they click you know, the button sign up. We're going to create that user account with the email and password that they gave to us. We'll also save the first name within the first name input value that they passed us as well. We're logging in the user. And then Bubble will go ahead and move on to step two. In step two, we will create a backend workflow. We're going to schedule this backend workflow to run. So the workflow that we're scheduling is send email. And taking a look at what that send email workflow actually does, all it does is just send an email to the specific user that we pass to it in this key here. So let's go back to our workflow. So we're asking Bubble to schedule this API workflow to send an email to that user at a later point in time. That scheduled date for this workflow to run is the current date and time. So basically what that means is right now, as soon as the user clicks sign up, we're logging that current date and time and we're adding plus hours three, meaning we're taking the exact current time right now, we're adding three hours to it. And then that's when this send email workflow will run. And then very lastly, we in step three, we're taking the user to the dashboard page. So what's happening right away is we're signing up the user, and then the user is going to the dashboard page. What's happening at a later point in time is the user receiving an email saying, hello, and they're receiving that email in three hours time after they signed up. So the beauty of this is not necessarily within signing up. Let's start thinking about all you can do in terms of workflows when you're able to schedule them to run at a later point in time. For example, let's say you have a bunch of products within your database. Let's just say that whenever a product is created, you want to only allow that product to exist in your database for 30 days. After 30 days, if that product has not been sold, you just want to delete it right off of your application. If you didn't have a backend workflow or script running and deleting all these products, you as an admin will have to do it yourself. Every 30 days, you would have to see exactly how many products have existed for 30 days and manually delete them out of your database. What's better instead is as soon as a product is created, you schedule a backend workflow for that product to run in 30 days, where if it has not been sold yet, you automatically just delete it from your database. So that's one good use case for backend workflows. Another is perhaps sending reminders for your users. So in this example here, let's say an item has been sold. As you can see, an item, a product, has a status associated with it. Let's say as soon as the item is sold, it's set as sold. So now naturally, the next progression is for the seller to ship this item to the buyer. Now what happens if a seller forgets to ship the item? You should probably have a backend workflow that automatically sends a reminder to the seller as soon as they've sold that product, tell them, hey, it's time to ship the product. Then after, let's say, one day, you send a reminder. Hey, you need to send this item to the buyer. Maybe they still haven't seen that email or they just haven't gotten to it yet. 
So now after three days, if that item still has not been marked as shipped, you send them another email reminder to ship the item. And then after, let's say, five days or a week, at that point in time, maybe your, your terms of service for your marketplace kick in, where if an item hasn't been shipped in seven days, the buyer is automatically refunded and that order is canceled. So in that point, after seven days, you have another workflow, a back-end workflow, where automatically that product has now been uh, canceled, right? And the buyer is refunded. So with backend workflows, you can start thinking about all of the beauty and complex workflows that you can build into your application, where now you're really limiting the manual actions you have to take as a business owner, as an employee, as an application admin. So I hope this video helped you at least start thinking about what sort of backend workflows you can build into your application. One thing to know as you build backend workflows is that it, they do require you to be on a paid plan to actually run. You can, of course, create backend workflows as you're building out, but actually running them will require a paid plan. So just note that when you're testing your application, if your backend workflow doesn't run, it's not that you built it incorrectly. Perhaps you did, but it's more so likely that you're just on a free plan. So thank you for watching this video. Hope to see you in the next one.